Well, welcome to this owner's review of this log burner made by Heta or Heta. It's a Danish company. Sorry, my Danish is very rusty. I'm not sure on the actual correct pronunciation, but it's spelled H-E-T-A. And the model is the Inspire 45. It was chosen to come in here and replace an open grated fire that was horrendously inefficient, if beautiful. But it really has transformed the heating in this room. Now, this is sitting at the base of a almost 15 meter Georgian fire or chimney and the liner was critical here so it wasn't cheap or easy to install we also had to have some building work done to create the opening for the log burner we were restricted by the height and that really made part of our decision easy for us the model here is on very low legs as you can see but still retains a good sized firebox with a nice area of glass this log burner has now been lit continuously burning for three days which is about the optimal maximum the discharge of ash into the actual tray is very poor and it tends to build up in the firebox to the level where it, it's restricting the ability to put logs into the actual log burner on refueling things i like about this log burner sleek design of it it's constructed out of steel as opposed to cast iron the handle on the front for opening the door remains cool at all times while the end part of it does. The part near the hinge does get quite warm but you don't have to wear gloves to open and close the firebox door. The regulator control down the base here, this little steel regulator here allows air in and you can hear it roaring. It's very easy to control and allow the air flow for the combustion rates. It ticks over very nicely when fully depowered to the left hand setting. The other knob here on the right is the riddle rod. It's woefully inadequate. It blocks almost continuously and really doesn't work very well at all. So that is one of the negative points. Note the ash. This Log burner's now been burnt for almost three days and in the normal operation of opening and closing the door a fair bit of ash does come out, particularly later in the burn once you've been operating it for three or four days as the ash level increases. So a couple of negative points there. Would I buy another one? Absolutely. It's transformed the heating in this room. It is extremely efficient. Manufacturers quote I think at around 82-83% we're burning a combination of well-seasoned English oak, poplar and some pine, all of which is sourced locally. It burns that mixture really well. We're only having to refuel if we're using oak probably every four to five hours. And you can turn this down nicely and it just ticks over beautifully. So if you're looking for a log burner with the ability to keep a fire in overnight, if you're burning hardwood, this model is perfectly adequate for doing that. Just briefly before we let this fire die down and show you the log burner being cleaned out, talk a little about liners and flues. We were advised to go for the best quality flue we could and I'm really glad that we did. I was extremely surprised that even on the second story of this house, the heat that emanates from the liner was considerable and I'm talking about enough heat to actually vaporise some of the old tar build up in the chimney that the liner was put up. So for the first few months of operation the liner heat was really quite considerable and it's very advisable that you have your chimneys really well swept before putting the liners in. Despite that we had to get the company that fitted this back to put some additional ventilation at the top of the chimney that had been sealed to allow some of those vapours out. They were coming back down and into the room. It's gone now, it vaporised off over the course of probably the first six months of operation but this log burner does generate an awful lot of heat so don't skimp on the flue, get the best quality, highest grade liner that you can if you're going to operate one of these. Well this log burner has now been allowed to go out and we're going to show you the internal workings of this and some of the issues with uh, the things we were talking about when we showed you this log burner lit. First thing to note is when you open the door, you will get a buildup of ash on the back of the door, which then falls out onto the hearth. It also traps on this tray. Now, that is a little bit of a problem because the door closes so closely above the tray here that it pulls any ash back and actually can interfere with the closure of the door. 
you'll see it building up here. It hasn't been too bad because this fire was only lit for one day. The other thing to note is the riddle great on this. This one, only been working a day, but there's no movement in that riddle at all, which does mean very little of the ash goes into the tray. And the other thing I don't like about this log burner, just look at the size of the tray, a tiny little tray. You can see it burns very hot and produces very hot ash. Some does fall through. But really, what you're left with is having to clean this log burner out using a shovel to remove any ash in the ash pan. The other thing to show you, which uh, didn't appreciate when we were buying this, but just look at the slope on the fire bricks at the, the top. This really does slope down quite aggressively, so there is a much reduced height at the rear of the firebox than there is at the front. We have found that that physically does interfere, particularly once you've burnt this fire for about two or three days with the build-up of ash, the volume of the firebox is reduced significantly by that uh, deep slant with the fire bricks. Also, with the retaining bar in the front here, which is advised to use when you're burning wood, again, there is a narrowing of the gap between the, the top and the bottom effectively. Glass keeps relatively clean, if I show you that. This has been burnt for 24 hours without being cleaned. So the airflow system works quite well. It doesn't work along the bottom of the glass. You do get this band build up along the bottom where the air is restricted by the build up of ash that tends to accumulate between the bottom of the, uh, the fire bar, the, the log bar and the, the front bar on the bottom of the log burner. Glass is original, that's been in place now for about 18 months. We have had to replace the rope seal, really because it gets damaged, again, by ash build-up sitting on top of it and then being squashed within the actual closure of the door. But by and large, that's quite a simple job. It's easy to, to source. So overall, very pleased with this log burner. It works very well. It gives out a beautiful amount of heat. The door mechanism works well. The handle remains cool, so you can open and close it during normal operation without gloves to refuel. The airflow regulator mechanism is very nice and easy and simple to use. The riddle grate is worse than useless. The ashtray is inadequately small for the volume of the dogs and ash that's built up in it. But overall, I give this log burner nine out of 10 simply because of the beautiful amount of heat it gives out. Thanks for watching.